In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Christ is in our midst. In today's uh, gospel, we hear our Lord uh, giving the parable of the vine dresser, a very pointed parable to his audience, being that at the end of it, he's essentially condemning the leaders of the Jewish people. And the accusation is this, based on the parable. He says that a certain man had a vineyard and he leased it to vine dressers or husbandsmen. Now, when we understand this lease to be essentially that they are allowed to live off the land. So he was giving them their full livelihood. And in return, they were to tend the vineyard, to cultivate it, so that it would bear fruit. And of course, most of the fruit they would keep. But the master would also send servants and since it was his land and since they were working his land, he would receive a certain percentage of that, of that fruit that they bore. Now instead of uh, cultivating the land, instead of simply offering this fruit back to the person who was providing their sustenance, instead of doing that, when the master sends a servant to them to collect essentially what is a small portion of what is due to him, they, they beat him and they kick him out. And this happens a couple times. Eventually, the master sends his son and it says they kill him outside of, of the vineyard. Now, first of all, it's obvious that this refers to Jesus and those scribes and Pharisees listening to this would hear clear references to the prophets who were killed at the hands of the people that they brought their prophecy to. This analogy of a vineyard is not a new one either. It comes from the book of Isaiah and it speaks of how the kingdom of heaven or the people of God are a vine, a vineyard that is meant to be cultivated and ultimately that the people of God are meant to bear fruit. So Jesus is saying this to their face, and at the end of the parable we know that they want to um, lay hands on him, and they want to uh, uh, kill him. And of all this is partially the lead up to uh, a feast day that we'll celebrate in a few weeks when we celebrate the feast of the exaltation of the cross. So we'll be hearing more of these type of Gospels, Gospels that are predicting Jesus' demise. But Jesus in this Gospel also is letting them know that He is the Son. That He is the Son that's come to the vineyard. The Son that they're eventually going to, to kill. So obviously... Uh, this is a condemnation upon those people who heard it. And that's what it's meant for. That's the whole parable. But we should put ourselves in the gospel and try to find our own responsibility. Now, this gospel would easily be able to turn on, let's say, the Orthodox Church. We have a hierarchy. We have, of course, bishops who are overseers of the vineyard. We have priests who essentially are meant to cultivate the individual vine of the parish. And so we are to read this and take heed that, that we not be selfish, that we not turn away God, but that ultimately that we do our work diligently, that we cultivate the soil so that the church or the communities can bear fruit. But in Christianity, it's not just about bishops and priests. It filters all the way down to the lay people because the lay people, just like the church and just like the hierarchy, they have their own small plot of land that has been leased to them. 
They have that, their own things that they are called to be stewards of. They have been gifted with many gifts from God, whether those be spiritual gifts, the gift of children, the gift of having uh, material wealth or property, the gift of simply breathing every day. That each one, each Christian, whether lay or whether a priest, is called to cultivate what they have been giving with the notion that at least a part of what is given to them in their life is offered back to God in gratitude. You see, this is important because the entire lifestyle of the church, I mentioned this briefly in the newsletter, the entire ethos and lifestyle of Christianity is sacramental. It is this notion that we receive from God gifts, gifts that we receive and cultivate, that we try to grow and that we work with, that we then turn and offer back to God in gratitude. And when we offer the gifts to God back in gratitude, he gives a divine exchange, as St. Sophroni says. We give him our material reality. He gives us spiritual grace and everlasting life. So what are the fruits that are expected of this vine? Well, certainly in Matthew's gospel, he's speaking of righteousness, which we can think of righteousness as such a, for me, such a threatening word because... I know that I'm not ever going to be quote-unquote righteous. I don't ever think I'll ever feel righteous. None of the saints felt righteous. But righteousness is acting according to the gospel. It's having our insides transformed so that we respond to life according to the gospel. According to the gospel means like the Beatitudes, that our souls become purified and that we begin to deal rightly with other people, which means loving our enemies, loving our neighbors, and that we begin to deal rightly with God, that we are just in all things, because possibly a better translation for righteous would be justice, that we would be just in all our, all our behavior, actions, thoughts, and in our very being. That is certainly the fruit that is expected from the vine. The other fruits are the offerings of our gifts. Some of us have many spiritual gifts, such as prayer, such as prophecy, such as the ability to comfort others, such as endurance and hospitality that we are meant to offer back to God that we are meant to use within his church so that the vine can be cultivated and so that the, the earth itself can bring forth more fruit because when you sow into the body of Christ, the body of Christ and you reap a blessing. Many of us also have financial gifts. Of course, God has blessed us material, materially. The entire early church was sponsored by wealthy people. All the churches that were built just happened to be that somebody had a lot of extra money and donated it because they felt that God had given to it, it to them and that the one thing that they could do, because maybe they weren't skilled in certain ways, was to give what God had given to them and raise up a beautiful church and certainly this church is a witness to people maybe who weren't wealthy but who gave sacrificially because as they gave, they were giving of what God had already give them, given them. So whatever your station is in life, whatever your life is like, there is something that you have to offer. Everything that you have received is from God. Everything that you can think about is something that you should be grateful for, that you should take as a blessing. 
and in prayer ask God, what is it that you'd have me do with this blessing? How is it that I meant to offer this back to you? And if all of us Christians were doing this, if the bishops were doing this with their talents and gifts that they've been given, if the priests were doing this with what they've been given, and if the laity were doing this, each one of us together, then we have a healthy vineyard. We have a vineyard that when the master comes, he'll see the fruit and he'll say, good and faithful servants, enter into your reward. We'll have a vineyard that bears fruit where there's no judgment, but that there's love and growth and cultivation in a culture that is thankful for what God has given us. And ultimately, I mean, this is the way we're supposed to live our lives, in gratitude and thankfulness and generosity. May our Lord bless us to hear today's gospel message, to find ourselves, to repent if we happen to not be so thankful, uh, to repent if we have a stingy heart, and to ask our Lord how we can take what he has given us and offer it back to him. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Christ is in our midst.